Ukraine is at the center of the eastern and western worlds, and many wars have ravaged the land throughout history. Let us travel back in time to better understand what's going on in Ukraine today. The land that is known as modern-day Ukraine was part of a loose federation of tribes known as the Kievan Rus. The state was so large that it encompassed parts of modern-day Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, but over time got fragmented and fell to the invading Mongol hordes from the east. The Mongols were later defeated by the united might of Poland and Lithuania to the west, and Ukraine became a part of the Kingdom of Poland. The people of the Kievan Rus, including those in Ukraine, were followers of Orthodox Christianity, as opposed to Catholicism followed by their western neighbors. And after the Polish conquest, social unrest followed. The new center for the Orthodox faith shifted to Muscovy. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth to the west and the growing Russian Empire to the east competed for control of Ukraine for the next three centuries. Here is where the seeds of the east-west divide were sown that haunt Ukraine to this day. During this time, there emerged another power to be reckoned with, the Cossacks. Through rebellion, they managed to carve out a state of their own right at the center of a three-way diplomatic and military conflict with the Ottoman-backed Tatars to the south, Poland and Lithuania to the west, and the Russian Tsars to the east. Unable to fight on all fronts, the Cossacks allied with Russia. The move led to the ultimate integration of Ukraine into the Russian Empire. By 1795, after numerous wars with Russia and after multiple partitions, the Commonwealth was in its last stages. The Ottomans were pushed back from the south and the Tsars had cemented their rule over large parts of Ukraine. Only Galicia and the west fell under the rule of the Austrians. Over time, a sizable Russian population had settled in these lands. The status quo remained largely unaltered until the fall of the Russian Empire in 1917 and the collapse of Austria-Hungary a year later. During this time, a nationalist wave was sweeping through Europe and Ukrainians pushed for self-rule. Fueled by nationalistic sentiments, a number of Ukrainian governments sprung up, but the chaos ultimately led to civil war. Matters stabilized by 1922, when most Ukrainian land was incorporated into the Soviet Union as the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, and the remainder in Western Ukraine was divided among Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Romania. 1932 and 33 were the darkest years in Ukrainian history. Millions died of famine due to bad policies of Joseph Stalin. The Second World War turned out just as devastating for the country. More than 5 million Ukrainians died fighting Nazi Germany. After the war, all of Ukraine, including Galicia, came under Soviet influence. Some amendments were made to the constitution of the Ukrainian SSR, where it could operate with some degree of autonomy while also being a part of the Soviet Union as well. This allowed Ukraine to become one of the founding members of the United Nations. Crimea, located here, was transferred from the Russian Republic to the Ukrainian SSR in 1954. By this time, a majority of Ukrainians were bilingual, understanding or speaking both Ukrainian and Russian. In 1991, after the Soviet Union was dissolved, Ukraine gained its independence. Attempts were made by the newly elected officials to balance ties between the West and East, but this proved to be a daunting task. Ukraine was split in its loyalties to the EU and Russia. In 2004, the pro-Russian Viktor Yanukovych won the elections. The opposition under pro-EU Viktor Yushchenko staged widespread protests claiming the elections have been rigged. Yanukovych stepped down but Ukraine suffered economically due to Russian sanctions on gas and the global economic slowdown of 2008. In 2010, Yanukovych was re-elected and he promised the people that he would integrate the country into the European Union. His government was due to sign a free trade agreement with the EU in 2013 but backtracked at the last minute sparking a wave of demonstrations across Ukraine called the Euromaidan. What started as peaceful protests demanding the integration of Ukraine with the EU soon evolved into something much bigger, the call for Yanukovych to step down. The government cracked down strongly on protesters with the help of a special police force called the Bekut. Protesters responded by hurling stones and molotovs as they pressed forward in the cold. As news of the protest spread, a sea of people joined in and the Berkut were outnumbered. 
Yanukovych was forced to flee the country and seek exile in Russia. Meanwhile in Crimea, pro-Russian slogans were raised in Sevastopol. Unmarked soldiers suspected to be Russian took over the Crimean parliament and other strategic sites and installed a pro-Russian government on the peninsula. A referendum was held in which 96.77% voted for integration of the region into the Russian Federation. The results of the referendum are not recognized by most international countries who have claimed it to be fraudulent. The crisis did not stop there, but spilled over to the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts of Ukraine, together commonly called the Donbas. With demonstrations by pro-Russian and anti-government groups, which has since escalated into armed conflict between the separatists and the Ukrainian government. Since the start of the dispute, there have been more than 20 ceasefires, but none have stopped the war. Over 100 protesters and 18 policemen were killed during the Euromaidan protests, and more than 10,000 people have died from the war in Donbass alone. We are in the 21st century, and Ukrainians continue to suffer the consequence of their geography. With larger geopolitical forces at play, how will this conflict end?